Hi and welcome. You're watching a Windworks subscriber update video by mysterytomastery.com and the title of today's video is Learn How to Develop a Professional Mindset featuring Cassie Porter, an up-and-coming superstar on the Australian female golfing scene and PGA Tour professional Dan Morrison and of course yours truly Greg Spence. Check this out. Many people struggle today to improve on the trumpet and this is because they misunderstand how the instrument works and don't know what or how to practice effectively. Most methods just offer more and more exercises and this is where they fall short. They fail to uncover the real problems. Luckily there's a way to get far better results and it's much faster than I actually ever thought possible. The Amazing Windworks course helped me to improve much faster than other methods by revealing the flaws in my belief systems and my approach to brass playing. With just a few drills and exercises a day, I felt my mind and body change like never before and my playing was freer and easier than I could ever imagine. It works by eliminating inefficient playing habits and providing a structured and achievable program suitable for players of all standards. Simply go to mysterytomastery.com. That's mysterytomastery.com and sign up for the Windworks course now. It takes less than a minute, it's free to sign up now and it'll change your life forever. Click the link in the description below to get started. Hi, I'm Greg Spence, mysterytomastery.com. Bizarre trumpet video today. We're at a golf course. Now, you know that I've spoken a lot about golf through different videos, but today I have an honor and privilege to speak to one of the huge upcoming superstars of women's golf, Cassie Porter, and her mentor, friend, occasional coach, or caddy, Dan Morrison. And we are just going to talk shop, a bit of psychology, a bit of career, a bit of golf. Yeah. We'll just see where we go. But firstly, let me just say that one of my careers, let's, uh, enough about me, let's talk about you. What do you think about me? One of my <laughs> highest highlights of my career was playing at Carnegie Hall, flying business class, staying at the Waldorf Astoria. We get to do some good things in the professional life. We'll get to Cassie shortly now. Dan, I'd like to ask you a career highlight, and I know that one of them would definitely have been the day when you walked out over here and gave me my handicap of 54, <laughs> and probably more so when you handed me the trophy for B-grade club champion at a karaoke bar. That's a that's a wild experience. That must be up there with your Hard to highlights. Top any of those accolades, actually, <laughs> um, they're all pretty good. So, as, as far as my career with my golf, or yeah. oh, geez, it's so long ago. You told me a great story about you and Tiger Woods. You had a lot of people. Most stories don't go well that start like that. <laughs> um, yeah, I mean, playing playing in the same tournament as Tiger is amazing. Yeah. Um, that was 2009, which is forever ago now. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, in Melbourne, Australian Masters, Kingston Heath. Yeah. Uh, never had that many people watching me tee off the first hole ever. Right. Um, couldn't get the driver head to stand still on the ground when I was about to hit. <laughs> uh, very nervous, for sure. But just to be able to be there and be in amongst that hype, I didn't do any good that week. Um, but, wow, what an event. That, that The result doesn't matter. It's the, um, the process of you got there. And you were there, which is the big thing. It's, that's kind of why I'm talking to these guys. It's all the psychology of performance. And did you find that when you realised that you were on that green and Tiger was there and you were putting and everyone was watching and Tiger's gone, you go first, did the heart rate go up more than normal? Yeah, I mean, you, you, you think you're prepared for that moment. Um, I'd done a fair bit of psychology stuff before then. Yeah. And it, it's supposed to be... You know, you're allowed to share the same earth as other people. Right. Um, so you just want to go through your routine. But I'll be completely honest and say that was really hard. Yeah. Um, obviously, there's a double green there. So I'd played my shot from one fairway onto that green. And there's a big row of tea tree in the middle. So I didn't know that he was on the other hole. That yeah. was, I think the way we played the course, it was 2 and 16. So he was yeah. on 2, I was on 16. Yeah. Came out of the clearing and, and there's... There it is. Well, I, I didn't realise, looking around the green, why there were so many people there. It certainly wasn't for me. <laughs> Love it. Um, but, yeah, there was a lot of people there. Um, yeah. And I just, at that point, we looked at each other. Who was going to putt first? Uh, he pointed at me. I did as he said. Love uh, it. It was only about 30-foot putt, but the greens were quick, and I, yeah. I definitely left it four or five foot short. Oh. The next putt, I walked up. I was going to mark it, but I wasn't on anyone's line. And in that moment, I just wanted to get it done. Right. So, yeah, I would call it a reasonably yippy little stroke. Love it. Uh, but it hit the back of the cup, went up in the air and went in, and I quietly made myself, must say, uh, to the side of the green, getting out of the way and stood there and watched the other guys. But, yeah, look, something like that is 
you know, when you're 10, 12, 14, you're on a putting green, you say to yourself, this putt's for this or this putt's for that. Yeah. Um, but in that moment, yeah, having a routine is, and being able to just stick to that routine Absolutely. can really help you, if you're into it yep. properly, yep. it'll help you switch off from whatever's going around you, at least for that, you know, time that you need to hit that shot. Yeah, so, yeah. one of the memorable two putts, hey? <laughs> yeah, Fantastic. only to me. Yeah, right. <laughs> no one else, but uh, yeah, look, uh, that goes to, uh, coming back to your, your point about psychology. Yeah. If you're, if you're able to have those mechanisms in place, and I wasn't great at that early, yep. I had some help. Yep, yep. And uh, all the coaching I had was great, but after getting psychology help that I got, yep. was the, the best run I had in my career at that point. There you go. Um, the, the mind being able to control the body and processes, you know, and uh, being able to get to Cass early enough yep. um, where she was had just turned 14 when we started working together and being able to go, right, these are... These are the mistakes that I made, and if I can get in front and have this pre-programmed before the other habits even there, yeah. And now she's just awesome at it, regardless of the situation. There you go. So that's a beautiful segue <clears throat> into Cassie here. Now I'm going to make a few errors here, but we know that errors are the way that we learn. Um, While well, you've just said you started when she was 14, she's now 19, almost 20. <sighs> almost 20. As far as I'm aware, Rolex Rolex ranking of 348. That's about right. International. Right, yeah, there. right now, yeah. So there are 10 million golfers on the planet. <laughs> and we're at the age of 19, thanks to, we'll get into the dedicated practice sessions and great coaching, 348. That's not bad. Uh, I'm probably, I'm even gonna go there. Um, <laughs> You want to be world number one. Absolutely. Yeah, I've heard you say it. I've seen yep. you say it on television, on yep. interviews. Mm-hmm. I love that. Yep. How are you going to get there? Um, with the help of Dan. Yep. <laughs> um, we've said it, I've said it since I was 12, I think, that you know my number one goal is to be world number one. Yeah. Um, that's where you want to be. Yeah. Um, I do think, though, I mean, if that doesn't happen, it doesn't happen. But if we keep to our processes and keep doing what we're doing, um, just stay mentally strong, um, as Dan always says, we're not about this in our career, we're about this. Yep. So um, if we keep progressing nicely and as we are, then yeah, yeah. if it happens, it happens. But... I love it. I love it. I've got a concept that's basically what can we do, what can we sometimes do, what can't we do? Yep. And so there must be drills, both psychologically and obviously physically, that you have to repeat. This is the what I can do and I'm going to keep doing this because it's a foundation to my playing. Yeah. Uh, Am I on the right track there? Are there yeah. things that you do every day that you go, I know that I can do it, but I'm going to keep doing it just because I know I need to make sure that it's there forever? Yeah, definitely. What sort of thing would that be? Any particular drill or any particular shot? Or I see you hitting 100 little 30-metre chips onto the green. Yeah. You can yeah. do that all day long, but yeah. you kind of have to. Yeah, absolutely. I think it's it's pretty important to be really good from you know 120 in. Yep. Um, if you're really good there, then it's it's going to happen for you, you know, you have good stats and whatever, but um, it's Except more the just... the person that drives it like a laser bag. <laughs> <laughs> we do our best, right? <laughs> right. Um, yeah, look, I, I mean, you just got to be good at everything. Yeah. Um, and that's the goal. I mean, if you, you know, as, I mean, Dan says I, I can hit it straight, but um, if I don't keep practicing that and if I don't keep training it, then, you know, it's, I'm not going to hit it straight forever. Sure, so, right. Um, yeah, no, like if I can hit it straight forever, that would be absolutely that's, amazing. That's, I, see, <laughs> I, I like that everyone's women playing the ball, just fades and draws, and, yeah. and I'm like, that's great. And, but straight is good. Straight, straight is at the good. hole. Yeah. There it is, and yeah. it's going to land there and roll that way. Well, let's hit it there then. Yeah. Yeah, yeah it's really important to have all, all the shots. Of course. Yeah. Um, but, I mean, shout out to us lefties here. My Probably one of my biggest so influences <laughs> <laughs> growing up was Nico Hearn, clearly. Yes. Um, mentally, and, and this coming back to Cass, it's about building a model that sets up for the way you play the game. Yeah. So Cass drives it straight. Yep. Um, we're never going to be the longest in the world, but she's definitely above the middle of the curve. Yeah. So how do you have the best business where you get really good at your short game? Yeah, and sure. that, That's where Nick, and he's written a couple of great books. And that's earlier on, I, I gave Cass one of the tour mentality, which is a great book, um, yeah. forwarded by Gary Player, ah, um, right which is a nice person to have forward a book for you. Right. But that really talks about, and regardless of what you said, when we're on the range and this sort of shot, 
It's about the process of that shot. No matter sure. if it's a bunker shot, a putt, a drive, mm-hmm. if it's for a Mars bar or a million dollars, it right. doesn't matter. Go through that process and it will feel consistent regardless of the situation that's going on around you. And that's what you want to create. Absolutely, absolutely. A lot of environment in, in music world and stuff, we call it chaos, where I know what my trumpet sounds like when I'm sitting at home, uh, but then all of a sudden you get in front of Melbourne Symphony Orchestra and they've got percussion, ten people banging the hell out of cymbals and timpanis and stuff, and you can't hear a note that's coming out of your horn and you're playing to a full concert hall. There's a movie called West Side Story and they play the, play the movie and the orchestra plays the soundtrack live and that's dumb like it's really hard work and so you just have to adapt to your environment not fight it and go what can I do yeah what can I sometimes do what don't what can't I do sort of thing yeah. and go if I was in my practice room or if I was at Perigian Springs here doing this shot what would I do if I was there and it's an take amazing buzz line you use there and it is one of Nick's ones it's what can I do with this shot right now yeah Right now. Yeah. It doesn't matter if I've made an eagle or a double on the last. What about this shot, like yeah. right now? And it helps quieten your mind. Yeah. If your mind can stay quiet, you'll make better decisions. Oh. Because we all get flustered in the moments. Yes. But if you can just come back to your centre, what can I do with this shot right now? And it sounds easy, I but think, it's damn hard. I think that's one of the toughest things is to put behind you, We, you know, the power of now. There's only one reality. The rest is an illusion of what might happen or what's happened in the there's past. There's no multiverse, mate. Well, sorry. No, sorry no, to break yeah, anyone's yeah. mind there. There's, there's metaverse, but not multiverse. <laughs> I, still, I want to be the first trumpet studio on the metaverse, but I'm not going to do it. Um, so, gold gold stuff, just the perception of what can we do right now. Do you, where are you at with that kind of uh, psychology now? Because you, you became uh, tour player in January. Yeah. Yep. So you've travelled it. You've played overseas. You've played here. You would have had moments where things haven't gone your way. What do we do? How do you cope? And do, do these skills that Dan and Nick and you've been developing, have, yeah. do they kick in at that time? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Um, it kind of goes back to when I was a little bit younger, probably about three years ago. Yep. Um, the first time Dan gave me the book to a mentality by Nick O'Hearn. Um, I was very much a person that did my best but struggled to not you know, block out struggled to block out the noise yep. um you know traveling overseas feeling you know out of your comfort zone i'm i'm not at home you know this it's, it's for a bigger tournament it's for a bigger prize and mm. whatever yeah. um but reading the book it, it genuinely changed my life you know in um approaching you know going overseas playing overseas playing for bigger um bigger things you know um yeah it's just staying in the now and what can we do right now has honestly just it's just a, a staple for our whole game and it'll never change. Um, it's just doing the same. Yep. Um, and if you can stay in the moment and just accept what's around you, you know, accept that there is going to be noise and there is going to be distractions and, um, and that, that's okay. But if you yep. can just be like, you know what, hey, I've, I've got a pre-shot routine for a reason and if I, if I do that yep. and I go through that, then it'll, it'll be okay. Just you know? do the process. Trust the, uh, yeah. Roger Federer, trust your practice. Yeah, and right? one tournament doesn't define us, right? Correct. So. No, that's right. It's, that's something that's been really important and coming back to your earlier statement about the Rolex rankings, yeah. I mean, Cass has played 10 tournaments and gone from <laughs> where she was to that and that's not awesome. through Larry winning finishes it's consistent results we want to do this for 20 years we're not interested in you know winning every tournament around the world you want to have a good job competing nicely and in the 10 tournaments Cass had 9 top 10s see that's so it's an accumulation of results and the way you do that and the way we said about it early days is what sort of things don't make us flashy but make us really stable and again coming back to Nick that's how he played the game. Yeah. I learned from his chops. So yeah. I'm not an overall bomber off the tee. So yeah. my strengths are here, here and here. Yeah. And I'm not going to be someone that's going to be really hot and cold. I just want to be around the mark. And how do we do that? Yep. With this, this and this. Yeah. What can I do? What can I sometimes do? What can't I do? The thing that comes to mind there is the, the Mickelson meter. He goes, if I'm in, inside a meter, I can uh, sink at 97.7% of the time. I, just, I won't miss, or 99% of the time. Yeah. And his, his strategy of doing that. So when he won, was it the Masters? or That uh, wasn't the Masters. It might have been US. It wasn't the latest PGA. He did get two Masters titles. Oh, yeah. It might have been one of the Masters yeah. where he's, he's chipped on. And it was a tricky little chip. And he had to sort of run it and move it around. And as soon as it went within 
that in meter zone. he's done this because he knew he was home. And there know. is a lot of that that's quantifiable. People <clears throat> say, and we had this at a tournament, Cass's first event, we had yep. one of the other pros really kindly give up some time there in the green and saying, you know, you can build your confidence by through practice. If you're statistically know that you are going to do this from this distance, yep. when you get on the course, that gives you the confidence to go, well, I know. I know what my numbers are from here. Right. Um, I don't... I like it. I really do. I, I like how that works. But mentally, again, for me, it, it is good to have that practice. But in that, it's hard to recreate that moment. Yeah. So, again, the pre-shot routine is yep. everything. Absolutely. So, I'm, uh, I'm coming from a, um 18 handicap perspective, but the creating the feel in that pre-shot is the same as... This will seem weird, weird for you guys, but getting people to walk around and go... Mm. get the feeling of playing the instrument because everyone wants to uh, grab the chops choke the club mm. force the air hit too hard tighten the body mm. and and it's staying loose and keeping uh, that's Part what of that, it's giving your body a job to do yep yep so it starts here what, what do I want from this shot and that's what then so we basically break it down into information gathering comes first yep Where's the wind? How far is it? Where's the flag? There's something I was just like? to say on the day. It's yeah. going to change. Yeah. And then from there, it's, well, so that's your information gathering. Then you're going to do rehearsal. Right. My, my, my brain now tells my body, this is what this shot's going to feel like yep. to hit the ball there. Yep. That should be 75% of what you're doing. By the time you get over the ball, it's like it's, that. It's been done. But that's execution. Yeah. However, you watch a club golfer completely different it's yep. the other way around so they just grab a club stand over the ball and start thinking about it yeah right and you can't stress how flipped mm. around the wrong way that is it's so flipped around the wrong way and again i'm lucky to be able to you can figure out now why i'm talking to these guys there's some similarities <laughs> between what our our existence um i'm literally doing that i've changed my grip a little bit and do the do the free practice swing and when I get up to hit the ball it's a practice swing yeah. there's no ball it's Perfect. just replicate yeah. the practice swing so what can you sometimes do what's the thing where you go oh I wish I could do that all the time what is there any particular thing and this sort of ties into um, how do you develop your game what are you working on what are your aims technically because you're obviously technically a ridiculously good golfer what are you trying to refine and, and make more consistent um, look I think you can sometimes win <laughs> um, that's that's going to come with obviously processes and yep. it's, it's not a goal um, it's obviously just doing your job as best you can yep. um, but what can we sometimes do um, I think it's just more about what you can do all the time really in, yeah. in my in my head anyway yeah. I yeah. think I think that I find comfort in that what yeah. you can do all the time no matter how you're feeling Absolutely. no matter how you're playing yeah yes <laughs> excuse me um yeah, I think, do you agree? It's it's what we can always do. And whether that comes from, whether good results come from that, whether results we're not completely happy with come from that, then I think you've got to find comfort in you did all you could. Yeah. yeah. Well, it comes down to repeatability, doesn't it? At the end of the day, yeah. you've obviously got, I know from, you know, people at clubs talk, and I hear you're out on the men's tees and you're smacking it 30 metres past everyone else. So you can obviously drive. It might not be as long as... Who's the longest driver on the female <laughs> tour? Who, who's the... Um, oh, <clears throat> not, not, not that it matters. It's Lexi, not, Lexi obviously gives Lexi, it a good rip. There's a couple of strong girls out there. That's, yeah. And, that's, mm. and, and their results probably you know give you that. They're, they're flashy. like They can go ridiculously low. Yeah. Um, my, I keep banging on about Charles L the third. Cassie's probably shoulders are going to slump because I don't stop talking about him. In my opinion, he is the greatest golfer in, of of my time. Who's that? Charles L the third. And you just answered the question. Yeah. Who's he? What does he do? Right. Well, mate, he's. If you go into the Google at some point and you yeah. go back and go right, how many how many years in a row has this guy finished in the top fifty or hundred? Love it's it. It's over twenty. Love it. Because his results are compounding. There you go. Um, so what we try to do is we have a debrief after just about every round. Like yep. I'm not big on breaking stats down into shots to hole and stuff like this because no. sometimes you don't hit it at the hole. Yeah. A lot of the time, to be honest, at a decent event. Yeah. So we sit down and we just go, how many greens, how many putts, how many fairways? Right, where's our weakness now? And we target that just to keep balancing up those sure. three equations. Yeah. So that's what that's. So what do we sometimes do? We sometimes do part of it good, and then other times we need to work on our weakness to bring that up. And yeah. that's just identifying um, what you find with some people is when you break that data down heaps, they lose motivation to do it. So if sure. you tell a lot of up and coming elite amateurs, I want these stats every round. I want shots to hole and I want a six iron. They do it for about a month, yeah, and then you don't get much. it again. It is 
in my opinion, some people like it, yeah, but in my opinion, it it's too much. Particular because we're kind about of playing golf. Yeah, correct. We want to get the ball in the hole. Right. We want to pull the golf calls apart like it's a chess match. Yeah, I love it. Love it. What a great analogy. Mm. Uh, it is that we lose focus on, like, the what we're doing in the music thing is making noise, making a sound that we like to hear and a feeling that's fun to play. But people lose that and get caught up in the... Uh, in the technicalities of it and I teach the technicalities but that's part of the whole process you need to have a good technique you need to focus on grip or on alignment or you know rotation or balance transfer or whatever but we don't get hung up on it and think about it all the time I call them invitations if you do a little just say it's I used to say on the course here with Brad when I'm what can I do Bradley and I'd say it out loud and the what I can do is do the first couple of parts of the swing Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and I call it the invitation if you do it enough eventually the body will turn up to the party because muscles are dumb but the brain's smart and people learn differently yes what makes your student tick right it it can be I mean that's the the adaptability of a good golf coach and not of just golf any coach I hear stories about Wayne Bennett with the Broncos he would wouldn't do a lot of group huddles or it wasn't his preferred method he could know how each what made each player's motor run yep. and go and talk to them individually and some players you'd have to really rev up mm-hmm. and they would respond to that Yep. and some players would so, go into their shell so he'd go yeah. and have a quiet chat and try right. to softly give them confidence Great coach. which is how to get the most out of them also correct correct it's just such powerful stuff that we need to know and I, I mean I could sit here and talk to you guys all day long but I know this is actually part of Cass's lesson that they took their time out so much appreciated but one of the the uh that ties it all in. I watched the end of the Maya Classic last night and Jennifer Cupcho said in the interview, you don't have to be perfect to be a winner. Quote, and I'm, I'm dark on myself. I was actually going to, uh, I planned to go, so if I said, you don't have to be perfect to be a winner, who said that? Would you have known? I wouldn't have. You wouldn't have? No, cool. It only happened <laughs> in the last week. But um, what a great thing. You don't have to be perfect to be a winner. You can hit lots of duff shots and still win. You can split notes, but if you split it with style, who cares? We're human and we make errors, and errors are the way... To, if you make too many errors all the time, your handicap drops or your rankings drop and you're not going into competitions because there's a flaw in the technique, do we panic? No. Do we assess what the problems are? What can I do? What can I sometimes do? What can't I do? At the moment, I can't putt straight. I can three putt. I'm freaking good at that. But working on it. Short putts, longer putts, patience, repetition, and we get results, ultimately. Um, any closing thoughts, or is this a good place to call it? Uh, anything you'd like to add? Any any gold nuggets? To uh, You're looking at the prime example of someone who, what you just said then, two years ago, and would be self-admitted to this, used to panic if there was a tournament coming up, would be on the range, and would be, I'm not hitting it great, and <laughs> it got less over the years when she was really young. I used to get from the range of the first round before the tournament, a phone call, sometimes tears. Dad, help me. <laughs> I can't Where even you? Straight. Love it. But trusting what you said, coming back yeah. to the quotation just then, so true. Mm. Your best weeks where you feel like you've played the best, you don't often win. No, right. The weeks where you may not have done a great job, but you get a lot out of your game. Yep. Man, you look back some weeks, you win, you go, hey, that didn't feel like a win. Right. I didn't. That felt like not a great week. Yeah. But on that week, everything might have been firing at 70%. Yeah. So adding substance to your, to your quote there, yeah. great one to finish on. Yeah. Um, don't, don't try and be perfect. Yeah. No right. one's perfect. Yeah. You're never going to play flawless golf yeah. ever. Right. I don't care who you are. Yeah. Even if you hit 18 greens in regulation, at some point you might have hit a wedge to 30 feet when you're trying to hit it to five yeah. for an open pin. So I think it's an unrealistic expectation. Yeah. Be the best version of yourself. Sorry, to, I always say this. Perfect. Just be the best version of yourself you can be. And as long yeah. as you keep trying to improve what that looks like, yep. you're always going in the right direction. Just in life too. Absolutely. Um, yeah, you can, be a, you can be a great golf professional, but if you're not a good person, it doesn't really amount to much. So You've you just be a good person too. You just reminded me of that. That is so true. And the reason I wanted to speak to these guys is because of their attitudes. And, and Cass told me a great story where she's on tour and another player came up and they've said, you shouldn't smile so much. It looks like you're having too much fun. <laughs> That's from a professional golfer to another. Now, I do know some musicians like that, and they're not generally the people that I hang around with. And you just saw the way Cass was talking then. We're not saving lives. And 
this is a morbid thing to say, but guess what? We're all going to die one day. So I reckon that we should probably have the most fun and get the most out of life that we can without freaking out too much. And um, I could talk about anxiety and performance stuff and we won't go down that path. I do humming. Mm, it releases the body and it relaxes you and all sorts of cool, fun things. That'll be for next time when I interview you when you hit top 10. I don't care where you are in the world. I'm going to fly there. <laughs> right. Good luck with your career. Thank you. I can tell you're already grounded. You're surrounded with a lot of people that have got support, great support for you. It goes all right. You've got all the ingredients to make it there. So uh, good luck. Congratulations so far. Thank, Thank you. you for your time. Thank you're you welcome, for having Thank us. You. Good on you guys. Thanks. See ya. <laughs> you're awesome. Thank, Thank you. Thank you so much. That's great. Good, mate. Love it. Thank Beautiful. you. Hey, exciting Exciting stuff.